All right. Do you hear me? Yeah. Um, let me see. How many people are with simultaneous translation? Can you just raise a hand? Because I need to know, shall I speak slowly or? Yeah. All right. OK. So today, uh, I'm not here to give you a lecture how to do things or how to produce software. I'm here to um, share with you my idea about the future of software testing and what I see as trends uh, at the moment uh, on the IT market. Um, let's talk about the future of software first, and then we talk about the future of testing as part of the software. Uh, if I talk too fast, please raise a hand, I'll slow down, yeah? Because sometimes I get carried away. Um, so these are the trends that um, I think um, will be some of the most important ones in the, in the near future. Um, we talk about near future, I don't know what's going to happen in 20 years, but we can talk about short term future, like to five years. Um, this is way more feasible than, than talking about the uh, 20 years uh, ahead. So we have um, Agile and DevOps, everybody knows what this is. I'll, I'll, I'll touch the, these uh, topics uh, a bit later on uh, in my presentation. But it's expected by 2020, 75% uh, of the companies to implement Agile or DevOps or both. Uh, cloud computing, we expect it to have a growth of six times just in the next few years. Big data, you know, this is coming on the market, it's, it's big. There is some fear that these players that collect so much data um, may play a very important role in the future. So people getting a bit concerned about the big data, uh, you know, uh, managers. IoT, Internet of Things, four times growth in the next couple of years. Uh, mobile, well, I'll give you some examples later on, but pretty much everyone on the planet is connected nowadays. And security, this is uh, one of the, the most important things as a trend for the future. And of course, we talk about AI, the artificial intelligence. Um, well, pretty much no one knows what's going to happen in the near future. But we have some start, as a start, some ideas how it's going to go. Uh, of course, the Technical complexity of the software systems is constantly increasing. Com um, softwares, uh, software packages, software is uh, more and more complex nowadays. Uh, in the same time, we have uh, development and delivery cycles decreasing drastically, dramatically as the complexity goes. Let's talk about a little bit about DevOps. This is a very buzzword at the moment. Um, you, you know very well what DevOps is. Um, basically, reducing the, the aim is reducing the time between software development and operations while we are make, we're making sure that the quality is on a certain level. Um, that means everything has to go faster. That's, um, that's why you need a lot of automation. So then you introduce a lot of tools and integration. We talk about continuous integration, continuous deliveries processes. Um, this is going to continue. Although some people say, you know, I, I had a talk with um, one manager in Amazon, um, a research and development manager, a big, uh, big manager. He said, believe me, in five years, we will not have DevOps at all, yeah. I, I couldn't believe what he said, but uh, uh, he's saying that Amazon is uh, preparing a platform where you can plug your software piece and it's going to work, and they guarantee you that it's going to work. I don't know how they're going to do that, 
because it's, it's not their piece of software, it's, it's my piece of software. But they claim they can do that. I mean, these guys invented the cloud, so I, I believe when they say something uh, will be done. So DevOps, yeah, maybe it will uh, continue, maybe not, but at the moment it's a very hot topic. So what's the most important components on DevOps? Automation, agile development, you know, uh, how do I do that? Yeah, agile development, see, more than 50% automation. So you can make your choice what's important for the testers in terms of DevOps. Obviously, some technical skills and be involved in automation. Uh, I know that um, there is no um, like strict role of software tester in DevOps pro uh, process, but again, if you go to the definition of DevOps, ensuring the quality is a must while, you know, shorting the, the period of delivery. Now, it is hot, and I said up to 75% will be implemented, but you see, there are companies and there are organizations that are not interested in, you know, uh, implementing DevOps procedures. Uh, so, you know, you have different types of projects. You have very easy projects like mobile application of three, four pages, but you also have billing streets in a telecom that involves like 50 applications connected. No, you can't really change the organization so fast that, you know, they can continuous delivery and do continuous delivery uh, in that environment. So some organizations are really not interested in DevOps. Yeah. Big data. I'm just going to hit the topics uh, a little bit so we have a context uh, to discuss. Um, obviously, this is, this is big. I mean... Um, the hard disks and, you know, the, the data um, in general is becoming cheaper and cheaper. So people, um, um, you know, see the trend, zettabytes, it's, it's like crazy. This is cheap and um, it will be a day-to-day -day business for, uh, for most of the companies in the next uh, five years. Um, growth until 2020 is expected to be 400 percent day-to-day business for every, probably for every uh, IT company. Um, but what are we doing in terms of testing of big data? You know, at the moment we don't do much on the big data. We just do um, data storage testing, management and maintenance testing. But there will be so more in the future. It's like analytics and everything. Uh, around the data, uh, you know, statistics and everything. So it will be, it will be totally different story. Uh, and we have to really develop in that direction in terms of software testing. IoT, Internet of Things. So you all know this is also a, a trend that is going in the future. See how it goes? Like 50 billion, billion devices connected. Yeah, um, in a couple of years. So talk about any kind of devices that you can imagine. That's, that's really something crazy. But according to HP, 70% of, of the devices that are on the market right now has serious issues in terms of security because um, communication is not encrypted because there are some security, you know, holes and it's not very well tested. Confidentiality is open, you know, communication between these devices is like plain, plain protocol. It's not encrypted at all. So um, everybody can basically hack it. Yeah. You are, of course, you can say, oh, it's a microwave. Who cares? Well, it's not. It's not like that because everything is connected nowadays, you know. Uh, and also for the testers, of, except security, you have other topics to think about, like how do you test connectivity with millions of devices? How do you test that? Yeah. Also, 
because it's not only computers, it's not only smartphones, it's, it's, it's like every device at your home. Uh, this increases the number of scenarios and, and we have to really be very creative uh, how we are going to approach the testing of that and ensuring some quality. Mobile. Do you know that by 2020 there will be more people with mobile devices than with electricity? Can you imagine? There will be people that have no power at home, but <laughs> with a mobile device in their hand. Yeah. For uh, 5.4 billion. So think about that. Everything is mobile. I'm sorry. Yeah, good question. Thank you very much. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to charge them. Maybe in the neighbor's house. Uh, but uh, that's the statistics, uh, you know. It's, uh, it's, it's unbelievable. Everybody in this world will have a mobile. Think about internet usage. Think about um, applications. Think about testing of all this. It's a lot of work to do for us, you know, testers. And of course, what kind of testing? User experience, all these applications, they have to be tested. How to uh, ensure the quality of the applications on mobile devices? How to ensure user friendliness? Um, also, security again. These apps, they have contact, uh, access to your contact list. They have access to your calendar. They have access to your identity data. They have access to your photos. To basically everything, if you if you allow them, of course. But uh, most of us do that. And on top of that, we already use it as a bank, you know. Um, so basically, my phone is my wallet. So imagine if it's not very well tested, people can take the money, and you know. And as I say, as a tester, you would never joke with people's lives and people's money. So this sh this should be. Uh, very well tested uh, and secure. And of course, so many platforms and, and dependencies between, between those platforms. So test automation is a must, absolutely. You can't really um, go without, without it. And again, let's, let's, um, let's uh, hit the topic on security in general, not only for mobile devices, not, not only for IoT devices, but in general security will be one of the biggest, the biggest uh, let's say, challenges in, in the next years. Um, again, because of credentials, because of uh, sharing uh, data, confidential information. You know how the hot topic now in Europe is uh, GD, GDPR? You know that? I don't know if it, it's a big deal in Belarus, but my God, I have a company, ah, you don't want to know. Like, I'm collecting emails for a newsletter, and now I have to do hundreds of documents and prepare all these procedures and, and it's, it's getting really crazy about uh, working with uh, personal information of people. Is it worth it? Well, if you ask me, no. It's, it's only paperwork. But if you ask uh, Facebook, yeah, <laughs> they will say something different because that guy is still in, uh, in the court about that uh, problem with the data. Um, so you see, uh, at the moment, um, 16 billion. In a couple of years, three trillion dollars will be, you know, big, uh, will cause the cyber attacks and stuff like that. And every day you have more than 200 threats. Every day. Now. Imagine what's going to happen in the future. Yeah? And nobody's protected. You think they attack only the big companies? No. It was funny, I was sitting at home, and I have my small server there, and I was watching live how two Russian guys were trying to hack my server. Why? It's a personal server. I don't have a bank account, I don't have anything there. It's like photos and you know, some movies, and that's it. But they were like, yeah, let's hack this. And then I closed the ports, and that was it. But you know, it was funny. So nobody's protected. Nobody. Then 
What else are we going to test? We're talking about shift left, shift right. Sillard, <laughs> uh, uh, one of our speakers, uh, he's, uh, this is one of his uh, favorite topics. But yeah, let's test earlier, you know. Are we going to test APIs, like interfaces? Are we going to test services? Yeah, we have to start. Really? Only 15 minutes? Oh my god, I'm late. All right. And now we come to artificial intelligence. That's hot topic, you know. I have a son of 17 years, and he's looking where to go to study in university. And he's going to artificial intelligence. So, people say robots will replace us yeah, one day. Well, maybe, but not now, and not in the next five years. So you don't worry. You have your jobs secured. Yeah? I don't think the artificial intelligence went too far yet. But you already have some applications on the market that they claim they're QAs. Have you heard about Abdiv? Yeah? Or uh, James? These are applications they claim to be uh, virtual uh, QA. Yeah? And also InfoStretch, they, um, they uh, announced that they will soon have a predictive and prescriptive uh, QA. It's like, like a lot of algorithms, machine learning, self-educating, self self-learning. Yeah, that's the future. Well, not now, but somewhere in the future. So they say AppDiv can test 90% of the surface area of the interfaces in a typical mobile application, self-learning, you know? Human cannot do that. Or at least not in a reasonable time frame. And they say the other 10% left, they're not so important because it's very complicated and, um, you know, it doesn't pay the investment, the return of investment. So they do claim that they can do your job. Now, not in the future. Now. And bots. You, all of you have interactions with bots, like whether it's on a website, some chat window, and somebody's talking to you, and they can interact with you, and they look like real people. This all a bot. You know, robots. Um, of course, testers can do way more right now. Like, they have domain knowledge. They can interact. They can, they can actually hear the client what he wants and, you know, think about it. They can also understand the purpose of the whole software package. Why is it built? Bots cannot do that yet. But they're learning. So it's really, really interesting um, trend. Well, there is some bad experience. Have you heard about Thai? Thai bot? So that was a bot. It was like um, designed to be a teen chat bot. But people are smart. They actually, um, you know, some people are haters. So um, they actually started um, uh, using the algorithms for self-learning of the bot to teach him bad things, yeah? yeah? And he started talking racist um, stuff. I, I, have a, I had a slide, but I deleted because I, I didn't want to make it uh, too ugly. But indeed, if you, if you go and search, um, it's pretty ugly tweets, uh, I would say. And that's all because of self-learning algorithm that has no brain, you know? And people can use it because ethics, you know, the bot has no ethics. And the speaker after me will explore this uh, artificial intelligence more. Uh, so I don't want to take his uh, topic. Uh, please see the next presentation of Olivier. Um, he will talk about uh, artificial intelligence in, and ethics as well. So how often do you hear testing is dead? I'm in 25 years in IT. I hear it every year. I hear it every second month, basically. Oh, you're dead. Oh, okay, I'm still alive. I don't know. I mean, so is it dead? No, it's not. Of course, you have um, artificial intelligence, 
You have some robot process automation, as they call it, RPA. So some of the, and of course, DevOps and all these uh, trends. So this will all change the role of the testers. Some of the tasks will not be that important anymore. They may be done by robots. But in general, we will stay. Yeah. So this is kind of a picture of evolution for the last 15 years. Um, and it's going to go that direction. It's like more integrated, more agile, more distributed. Um, and the role of the, uh, of the testers will change. Um, but on the other hand, people say, hmm, how fast you can produce software? And there is a report by Source Labs that says they cannot fix that fast. Even if your whole testing is automated, they need to fix those bugs. You know? So there is a limit you can go with uh, speeding up the process. Also, um, the desire of quick deployments uh, is like, faster and faster, it's, it's going down. I mean, there is a limit. I mean, you can't really deploy every second. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really make sense anymore. So there is a limit of that continuous integration and continuous uh, deployments. Of course, the role will change. They are a bit blurry now, because in agile world, testing is not you know, very well defined, like I'm, I'm working for ISTQB, not working, but I'm volunteering for ISTQB, and I see that it's not really clear what the role and how the tester is incorpor incorporated in that agile world. But this will come clear in the future. So don't worry. Um, yeah, the tester role. Test automation. That's absolute must. See, at the moment, only 20, 20 percent. That's not enough. That's not enough. And 90 percent of them are just UI tests, which is probably not the most important thing in the software, but you know, is the easiest thing to automate and only 10% of APIs uh, interface testing. Yeah, that's the reality. Most of the companies say, you know, 25, 20, 25% is automated. Well, if you really want to be up uh, to date and uh, stay on this market, this percentage has to increase. And what does this mean to us? We really need to have the skills, and I'll talk about skills a bit later. Why is it so difficult to automate? Tools, that's all right. Lack of expertise. And that's what I'm saying. You, everybody really need to go deep in this and get some more knowledge about, uh, about software test automation. How about manual testing? People say, you know, in, in five to ten years, there will be no manual testing. Everything will be, um, well, I don't agree with that. Um, that's what I was talking about, robotic process automation. At the moment, is only 4%. But this is the expectation. 61% done by robots. Yeah? There is still manual testing. There are so complicated things that have to be tested some, sometimes and decision making that cannot be, or at least at this stage, replaced by, by a bot, by a robot. So we're still in the, in the picture. You know, this part will be done by us. Automation and some experienced testers will, you know, do the stuff. So the relevant skills for the future, strategic and content thinking, because people can evaluate frameworks, networks, they can talk to developers. I don't think the, you know, a robot can do that. Also, people understand risks and exposure. They can talk to business uh, people. I don't think at this stage a robot can evaluate the risk. Maybe just 
mathematicalists, but not really businessists and, and softwareists. Also, business objectives. People have to have a um, follow-up and have uh, the right metrics. Uh, this is something that is going to be very crucial for the future. User flows, understanding user behavior. This can be a little bit simulated by bots, but still you need the knowledge and it's an uh, important skill, I think. Automation, I already mentioned that. Everybody has to be involved one way or another in automation if you guys want to stay in this business. So, and metrics and analytics, that's clear. Um, this is something for humans. This is kind of an overview on the, on the skills. And you see, the technical knowledge is not one of the, the biggest ones. I mean, people focus on test automation right now. They think this is the panacea, the future. OK, thank you. But analytical thinking is really what uh, we need uh, for the future. So how the testers think? Are we going to switch the manual testing? Yes, 51% say um, there will be less manual testing in uh, the future, so less manual testing jobs in the future. So, I mean, we're going to stay on, uh, on the market, but we really have to adjust a little bit to the new conditions on the market. So this is an example of a, a, a position. Have you heard about software development engineering test? Microsoft have it. When I started 25 years ago, they had it with the process called Microsoft Testing Framework, MTF. And SDET was uh, part of it. It's like definition. And if you look at it, it's, it's actually what we are going to be in the future. It's like combination of developer and tester um, Test automation, you're not going to write a code for, um, for the actual software, but you're going to write a code to test the software. So you're still going to be involved in, uh, in software testing, but in a different way. And of course, there will be manual testing done uh, that covers the complicated and very complex scenarios and where it needs uh, to have a human judgment and, and, and decision making. Also, another position. A QA manager. You know, I live in Holland. At this moment, I see on the market a lot of um, people that lost their jobs as test managers because of the agile. Because people say we don't need a test manager anymore. I disagree. Because the role of the test manager is, is uh, or QA manager is different. It's more like an advisor, it's more like process oriented. And you see it's the second, uh, 22nd best job listed at the moment. People should not be scared, you know. Um, the uh, field of testing is growing. So we have uh, all these things that I've mentioned before. So more testing is needed, more different types of testing are needed. So yeah, you're gonna be in the center of all the action. It's gonna be super exciting. Uh, yeah, why not? So that's another position you should like uh, aim at uh, in the future. I mean, everybody wants to have a career development. And still, this is what the Jason Arban, the uh, owner of Abdiv says. Before we replace the testing with robots, we will replace the software developers with robots. So you do not worry. Yeah? <laughs> they are first. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, guys. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, now we have 10 minutes for questions, for your questions to the speaker. And uh, I want to say that we have uh, two uh, sheets. Uh, one is for our speaker. You can get a t-shirt. Oh, thank uh, you. Today or tomorrow, using this. Uh, today or paper. tomorrow? Choose one of these days. Okay. And uh, next one is for a person from here for uh, the he, best he question. Want a t shirt, see? 
<laughs> all right, thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you for the presentation. My name is Alexey, and I have a question about the consumers of our software. I think, I, I mean, don't you think that people will change their minds in terms of quality? Uh, that means, for example, I want uh, updates on my phone every two weeks. Do you want that? Really? Really not. But no. a lot of people want because they say that there will be beautiful buttons or something. But you should understand that two weeks, it doesn't mean that we will be in time with the quality. So maybe you should change your mind in terms of, yeah, I'm, I'm, ready, I'm ready for waiting. And yeah. I understand that if you, I'm waiting two months or three months or whatever you want. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I see your so, point. So yeah. don't you think that this, is, this will be a new trend in the society? Because I think that consumers now understand that quality is not the biggest part of the agile. I think I, quality is the victim of the agile. Yeah, I, did, I disagree. And I'll tell you why. So if you think quality is not important, think about all those applications you have on your phone. Uh, the users become very um, impatient. You know, if you don't like it, you just delete right away. So the quality should be there. But right now, quality is the, some kind of the contract between the developers and uh, QA. Like, we understand that we can get the ultimate quality, but we yeah. think that we should get the normal quality. And All this right. level can, yeah. could, can be quite different uh, yeah. in the teams. True, true, yeah. Well, um, yeah, I mean, the levels of quality are subjective, as yeah. you say. And uh, it depends on the team, but uh, the ultimate uh, check is with the users, you know, so, yeah. I think uh, 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 the good quality is just uh, undiscussable. I mean, this has to be there, otherwise your applications will, you know, fail. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there any contradiction? Uh, step one, you said that there will be less manual testers, less people to manage. Step two, you suggest uh, that there will be more QA managers. Uh, who, we, we, who will they manage? I didn't say there will be less testers. I said there will be less manual testing, but I said there is so many new things that are coming up on the market that there will be enough positions for people maybe working it as will, a QA. Maybe it yeah. will not be called a manager role, for example, like human part of a yeah. robot testing system, for example. Well, you still need somebody to understand the process and to, you know, uh, okay. say Thanks. the quality. Hi. Hi. Uh, first of all, thank you for your inspirational and interesting speech. Uh, you've presented a lot of interesting numbers, like percentages of test automation uh, in future, uh, growth of test automation part, or manual, uh, decreasing of manual uh, efforts. But uh, what's the source of uh, all of these numbers? Like, uh, were, uh, was there uh, some kind of research in your company? Or no, no, no. These are where did they came from? Most of these statistics are based on world reports of some organizations. If you're interested, I can give you yeah, the links I'm after really that. Interested. Yeah, yeah. So I can come to you after the speech. Yeah, yeah we can. Okay, I can thank send you. you the presentation. I'm not coming up with numbers. Yeah. I mean, and thanks a lot for your talk. Uh, on the latest conference, in, Eurostar conference in Copenhagen, there was a lot of discussion about automation like uh, helpers for the testers. Mm -hmm. Not about the test automation, but 
uh, bots or automation who helps testers to do some activities. Yeah. When you talk about the automation here, you mostly talk about the test automation, or it includes both of these, what do you ideas? Um, in general, I was talking about test automation, uh, but I also mentioned during the um, you know, slides about DevOps that there are many more tools involved uh, that help you in the different areas of software development lifecycle. So some of them are helping you with the execution of testing, some others are helping you with the management of testing. Some others are helping you with the uh, uh, delivery. So yeah, it's a it's a big uh, bunch of, of software. Um, I will clarify a bit short, uh, shortly. Uh, there was discussion about the helper who can, let's say, prepare me uh, environment for me for this uh, mm -hmm. particular stuff. Yeah. And then when it's prepared and quickly, then you can do some tests, and yeah. the results uh, are saved and then analyzed. Yeah, it's so some kind of uh, assistant who yeah. working with you day to day. Yeah, we, um, I, um, I know software that um, can, uh, you know, kick a, a complete environment for you to you uh, to execute your te automa test automation uh, automation scripts, and then it's going down, and it takes like a couple of minutes to get it done. Yeah, those kind of uh, software as well, yeah. And this is based, uh, put in the cloud and everything. So, yeah, it was, uh, it's an exciting time, you know. Yeah, it's really exciting, yeah. Any, uh, any other questions? Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot for your speech. Uh, Andrei Stachevich, SolarWinds. Uh, how did you know uh, they were Russians, the guy who broke into your system? <laughs> you tell me how I know that. By IP. Uh, yeah. IP is not I mean, the identification uh, of the yeah, I know, I know. But nationality. They, they, of course, if you want to hack something serious, you will never do it through your uh, own IP. Sure. Yeah. But because it was a personal server, they didn't really care. You know, so, yeah. <laughs> Probably. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for this question. Yeah, that was a good question. There were actually two IPs, because there were two guys. So. Both of them are from Russia. So. Hi. Thank you for your speech. Yeah. I have a question regarding the AIs. Uh, well, on, different, on a lot of services, there are something like captchas, where the real people should put that, that captcha. Mm -hmm. And we had to automate this captcha, and it, it's almost impossible, because Google is beating the automatic robots who can pass the captcha. So we were forced to use some Indian peoples, where $100 for 100 CAPTCHAs and so on. So what do you think about it? Well, <laughs> uh, this is called the Indian interface, I guess? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, uh, what can I say? You know, when I was in uh, one of the telecoms, uh, there was no integration between two systems. So we had like 200 Chinese people copying information from an email to that system, and we will call that uh, Chinese interface. So, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but that can be automated. Sometimes, yeah, yeah, of course, it, it can be automated. And then we made the integration with, between the systems, and this interface disappeared. You know, so, so, don't you think that not only English people will do this in some years? I think uh, um, we underestimate the possibilities with the artificial intelligence, and I don't want to take the time from my friend who is speaking next. Uh, uh, he's going to. Uh, talk about this topic uh, in uh, more details and ethics. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I really believe uh, um, AI is something really uh, well, questionable. Let's say. Thank you. Yeah. It's, I, I don't say it's bad, I don't say it's good. Yeah. It's dangerous, let's say. You guys have seen the movie Matrix? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm a sci-fi fan, you know, so, yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, for me, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. And uh, in the beginning of the presentation, you mentioned um, that the security um, uh, testing, like, uh, we will have more, we will uh, have, uh, will rise. Yeah. Um, and uh, there was no, like, a slide or, um, 
like a total slide uh, of uh, uh, different segments of uh, testing, like security testing, UI testing, and yeah. like, uh, what do you think on the numbers? Uh, you mean how, what percentage? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think uh, security is, is, is a global thing. That, that's why I didn't have a special really slide on it because it's everywhere. I talked about security in the um, Internet of Things. I talked about security on websites. I talked about security in mobiles. So it's a global threat. So, and it's a very special type of testing. People uh, really need to have some special skills uh, to do that. So it's not a... Um, it's a specialization, let's say, you know, so, yeah, but uh, I, th I believe it's super important for the future, yeah. Okay, one more. Sorry, uh, Olivier. I, uh, thank you for your speech. So, first, uh, there is a clear trend, big corporations shifting uh, better testers, testers' responsibilities to consumers, right? So, Tesla have a lot of uh, feedbacks from customers they fixed. Yeah. So don't you think we need, we, I mean, uh, well, corporations to change the way how we test the product and maybe define the minimal requirements sets. Uh, yeah. And, uh, well, first, do you, see, do you agree there is a such trend? And uh, don't, second question, do you think we should change? Uh, uh, it's shifting a little bit, yes, that's true. Uh, but you know, um, it's going on for years, it's not now. I mean, think about uh, games. I, I don't think the gaming industry has a lot of testers. Uh, that's because they use uh, gamers to test it. So they call it bet beta testing, and it's actually the same process. But you're right, uh, the responsibility are shifting, and uh, but I, I don't believe any of you guys here is a better tester, right? You are professionals. So sometimes it's good to use uh, end users, you know, uh, for testing. But at, at the point uh, it uh, reaches the better testing, it should be already with a, a good quality anyway. So, yeah. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Dima. I'm also from SolarWinds. Um, uh, it was really nice, thank you for uh, sharing your knowledge. For, uh, it was not really clear was why on some slides there is the sum of columns is not, is not equal to 100%, but, uh, <laughs> but still. Yeah. Uh, we talked about uh, techniques, about the technology, and uh, there is a uh, change into automation, yeah? Um, maybe you have some ideas, some future trends on the person side of the mm, testing development. I mean, what skills do person need to be available in the future? What the, uh, what maybe person should grow in itself and uh, how to develop your personality in the future? I think uh, I touched that uh, a little bit um, for the skills. Um, some technical knowledge, analytical knowledge, must, that's a must. Uh, analytical skills, uh, not knowledge. Uh, and logical thinking, um, human skills, like uh, being able to communicate uh, with the team, soft skills, that's uh, uh, most of the things that are the most important right now. And of course, uh, test automation and being able to handle complicated software, uh, that's, that's a must. Because you know, uh, in, in the past, I've seen many people who are coming from different fields and becoming testers. I don't think it's going to be that easy in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I think uh, I'm already past five minutes and I don't want to, do, uh, to take more time of the next uh, speaker. And I will give this uh, to uh, the T-shirt to the question about the Russian... Uh... <laughs> that was an excellent question. <laughs>